In the reading from the the sort of the Galatians, we have this expression, and the time had fully come. We do well to ponder on this question as we start this year under the protection of our Blessed Lady. Time. This very morning I was opening up a calendar which was a Christmas present and as I opened it I was undoing the package and snipping the plastic which was hiding it and I thought to myself this is a symbol of what I am doing on this day, unpacking this gift of time. The Lord gives us time in 24-hour portions. And it occurred to me that it will be like that in the course of the year. What will open each page and time will be passing we will pass from month to month, and on we will go. And as we do so, we are writing our own chapters, as though each block were to be written by ourselves, the sole author of our book. But the only thing is that as we write, we are writing in indelible ink. We cannot erase what we have written on a single day. Therefore, we do well to pause at the beginning of this new package before we mess it up. Often life is made up of regrets. Some regret things more than others. Some actually of regrets make a great comeback. Others stay in the quagmire and get depressed because of what may have happened once in time, affecting all time to come. And often we ourselves are the only people who, with the grace of God, can actually readjust what we have in this portion of time yet on earth. We have in our hands a certain set of cards and we have to play them well. That is the set of cards we have. It occurred to me last night something parallel, and I'll share it with you in these few moments of meditation as we start this in. This was given to me yesterday as a present by a couple that I am preparing for marriage. And it is something which has been reproduced from a classic. It was Cardinal Manning, head of the church in England, way back. He wrote this book analyzing the implications of the various degrees and categories of sin. Everything we do has an impact and a consequence. And if we blotch our days, we carry also heavy burdens. And we also fall into ruts. And these ruts are dangerous. Whoever reproduced this book by modern technological means thought well to put this rail track on it, indicating as it goes into the dark what actually sin is doing. We're not quite sure where this is, but we were discussing it yesterday and we thought that it might actually be the rail track that led to Auschwitz. That seems to be some kind of watchtower and it's certainly not an interesting part of the world. And that is interesting, for Auschwitz is the logical consequence of not just one thing, but several things not fought against in time. And I picked this up by chance this morning. It is the comment that a Catholic writer and I know actually a Dominican, made on the choice of our government right now. It seems that one argument that was being used with regard to limited abortion was that people did not want abortion on demand, 
and therefore it could be tolerated that one could have limited abortion. But this Dominican writer reacts very strongly and collocates it in something similar to the Nuremberg trial. He goes in this direction. He makes appeal to what happened in 1948 and which was put in movie form in 1961. And in the Nuremberg trial we have this conversation going on. At one point we have this interrogation between the judge and one of the four judges being put to the question. Ernst Janning or Janning says, those people, those millions of people, I never knew it would come to that. To which Judge Haywood replies, Herr Janning, it came to that the first time you were sentenced to death, a man you knew to be innocent. And this Dominican writer goes on to indicate that the head of the government right now in this country could find himself in that situation of being the one to make that first decision and consequences will follow. As a result, I went into YouTube and looked for something which I knew was there and I found it immediately. There were whole segments of the documentary by Dr. Nathanson, Bernard Nathanson, of Jewish origin, who had been one of the main abortionists in the state until he came to see, by modern means, what was happening in the womb at the moment of fishing out a live human being. He saw the child screaming. And he made this film, The Silent Scream, and it is there on YouTube, a reminder that it is one of our brethren who is screaming at us. We are right now at the beginning of a year that could lead to a eventual holocaust in this holy land of Ireland. We do not know. We do not know what will happen to us between now and the end of the year. What we do know is that we only have now. It's kind of important because we tend to drift through life and settle for mediocrity. We also settle for sins that lead to other sins. We play with fire. Bad habits, unhandled vice, means glory lost or diminished, but it is not just equal glory and bliss. There is the accidental extra of those who give all, just as in the reverse, in purgatory, and in hell, it is not equal. There is complete recompense in reverse or in positive. Balance is re-established. So time lives on. Every moment is meritorious or demeritorious. And every second can lead to greater sanctification and greater openness to the impulses of grace. We can sharpen our system or dull it. Each grace accepted leads to more grace, grace in return for grace, as St. John puts it. Each dulling, each saying no, makes us harsher, and the Holy Ghost will not insist.